want you to know that the fear of being alone and having no purpose in your life is one of the most disabling things that you'll ever experience in your life. And you need to know the answer of two questions. Who are you and what do you want? For me, I realized as a kid, yeah, there was a choice I had to make. Either believe what the world said and only believe that broken pieces are ahead for me or believe that God loves me. It was hard. Because when God says in the Bible, I have a plan for you, I'm thinking, really? And I prayed for arms and legs. What do you want? I wanted arms and legs. It's not that difficult to believe. The God of the Bible says he has a plan for you. Do you see this timeline? I'm eight years old going forwards into the future. No idea what was ahead. The Bible says he has a plan. We don't see the plan. So it's kind of foolish to believe something that you can't see. But faith helps you to do that. Faith is exactly that. And faith comes when you hear the Word of God. When I heard the Word of God, I still didn't understand His love, His plan. So I prayed for a blueprint of His plan. And He didn't come back to me on that request. And when you don't hear from God, you then start to conclude what you believe. From then on, do you decide to keep on believing and waiting to see what happens and trust Him? Or do we conclude to do this? There is no God. I'm alone. There is no hope. There is no purpose. I'm getting bullied for the rest of my life. I'm never getting married. I'm never going to have kids. Never going to be happy. Man, was I wrong or what? And at age 10, I tried to end my life, but I'm still here. All I could see were broken pieces, and I had no idea that there would ever be hope for someone truly disabled. Emotionally, mentally, uh, uh, spiritually, physically, the whole thing. I mean, on every checkbox. I wasn't myself sometimes. I was so angry, angry at my life. And I want you to know in your life, there will be times where you feel like you'll be on the edge. But when you look at the word disabled, D-I-S-A-B-L-E-D, when you turn your back on the lies like this, and you come to the truth, the truth will set you free. Do I look disabled to you today? No. When you put a G-O, go, walk by faith and not by sight, and you put a G-O in front of the word disabled, it spells God is able to do what? Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ever ask, imagine, or attain. What does that mean? It actually means that God has a good plan. He never withholds any good gifts. I was 15 years old and I read John chapter 9. A man was born blind and no one knew why. Jesus was asked by everyone, why was this man born blind? Now, my doctors don't know why I was born this way. My parents don't know why I was born this way. And I want you to know that we don't have any answers for my birth defect. Jesus said this blind man was born this way because God's works are going to be revealed through him. Jesus spits on the dirt, puts mud on the face of the blind man, and there is no record of the blind man saying anything, 
flinching, asking anything, moving backward, nothing. Jesus performs his miracle as he is still. I realized Jesus did not sit the blind man down and say, uh, Mr. Blind Man, my name is JC. I'm the healer. I'm about to spit in the dirt and give you a facial. And after we wipe the mud off your face, you're going to see. He didn't do that. God doesn't need to tell me his plan. I just need to be still and believe he has a plan. That's when you walk by faith. Why would you need faith if God told you everything? If I was age eight and I prayed for arms and legs and God instead told me everything he's going to do until the age of 33, you got to be kidding me. I would die of shock. Writing books, 55 languages. If God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, then who can God not use? Amen. He loves you and he can do anything with your broken pieces.